his appearing. Praise the Lord. I just want to talk briefly on what I have titled our weapon, our thanksgiving. Praise the Lord. Just titled it, our weapon, our thanksgiving. I'd like you to know that we are all, as Christians, we are, we are already we are aware that we are in a spiritual warfare. The Bible tells us that our weapons of warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God. And uh, the, good side, the good thing about this warfare that we are into is that we have been well equipped with the necessary weapon to overcome. And not just that alone, we have been declared victors before the war starts. Now, I was listening one day to a particular documentary. I like listening to some warfare documentaries, military wars that have happened. And why a particular general, he made a statement that I like. He said, it is not the army that goes with the best weaponry. Neither is the army that has the best information. But is the army that does, that utilizes best his weapons and the information he has that wins the war. So um, it's good for us to be equipped. It's good for us to be also informed. But please, what are we doing with our information? Are we putting it to work? Praise the Lord. So if you put your information and the weapons you are given of warfare to work, you will get victory. Funny, not funny enough, uh, fine enough, you discover that we have been given these things from the word of God. Praise the Lord. And uh, I just want to just talk about one, of, one weapon that the Lord has given to us, which he said is our shield of faith. If you read that book of Ephesians, I think Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13, it says, above all, above all, I like that word, it says, above all, take up the shield of what? Of faith. And if you look at it, there, what the enemy tries to fight is our shield of faith. Because he knows that once he succeeds in weakening the shield of faith, he succeeds in removing the shield of faith from you, uh, you become defenseless. And we need, we are in the last times, and the Bible tells us that there are going to be a lot of darts, fiery darts from the enemy. So what you need, you need the shield of faith to quench all these fiery darts of the enemy. Now, but how can we now improve our shield of faith? It's just what I want to talk. Just one thing, one way we can improve our shield of faith. One way we can make our shield of faith stronger is in the aspect of thanksgiving. You may wonder how, but we're going to be seeing it from the Bible. The Bible, the devil knows that if he succeeds in pushing you to the side of unbelief, where you will no longer be able to believe in God for things, he has to a large extent given you a good blow in your fight. So that is what he tries to do. Now, if you become a thankful person, what you do is you recall the things. Now, let me just say, when we talk about Thanksgiving, we all know that Thanksgiving is what? Being appreciative to God for what he has done, what he is going to do, and for what he's doing right now. That's just a short definition of Thanksgiving. So, once you begin to recount on all these things, what do you do? You are building your faith. If we remember in the book of Second, no, is it Second? I think First Kings, no, First Samuel, chapter thirty. I think verse six there about it. It talks about David being discouraged after the Ziklag was taken over, and he said what he encouraged himself in the Lord. How by remembering those things, the battles God has delivered him from. If you read the Psalms, you will see a lot of those words of encouragement. Those were the things he used to build up his faith. And it said, I be at a, bring forth the effort after he has what? Been able to encourage himself through thanksgiving. God, I thank you for this. Lord, I thank you for what you have done. And since you did it that way, you will do it for me again. If we look at the Bible, the, the, Jesus, our, our Lord, told, told uh, when he was at, he was about to feed uh, the multitude, he said, Father, I thank you. 
It was a means of what? Boosting his faith. And I would like us to read one scripture. I came across this scripture this week and it has been a, source, a good source of blessing to me. If we read through our bulletin, the, the write-up on faith, living by faith. There was one particular scripture that was quoted there and I want us to read it. Romans chapter 4, verse 17 to 20. Please, can we get it on the screen? Romans 4, 17 to 20. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Before him who he believed, even God who quickened the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations? According to that which was spoken, so shall, they, so shall thy seed be. Yes, verse 19. And be not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. The last, the last verse. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. Let's read the last uh, sentence together. But was strong in faith, giving glory to, giving glory to God. You understand? Now let us look at it this way. Facts show that Abraham medically cannot have a child again. That was a fact. But someone told me, say, don't deny your facts, but confront your facts with what? Faith. So he now confronted the facts with faith. God that did this, if you read before the scriptures, the scriptures before that, you will discover that God they told him, he said, stand up, I will follow me to this land, I will show you. And God was answering all those things. Now, when he remembered all this, is giving thanks to God. He said, Father, I thank you. Because you who did me, you brought me this far, you are able to fulfill your promise. Our tool to boost our faith, one tool to boost our faith is thanksgiving. Now, we live where what we can clearly describe these days are the last days. We don't know how long it's going to stay, but one thing is certain we need faith to go through. And the devil will try to fight that faith to suppress it. Now, I'll line up on this. He said, there was one man, there was a story I saw online, and I like this story. He said, a particular hunter went into the bush, and he, he had compasses and his gears of navigation that he could use to find his way within the bush while he was hunting. And he was under an attack, and one of the beasts came, hit him, and kind of made do with all those gadgets and just ran away so he was lost he couldn't find his way the more he tried to find his way the more he was getting lost in the forest now after two days he was famished he was in he was really really tired on the third day he managed to move with the little strength he had and he came across an apple tree. He said, oh God, thank you. An apple tree in this place, this must be a wonderful miracle. So he sat down under that apple tree and he took the first fruits. He said, Father, I thank you. He took the first fruit, he gave thanks to God. He took the second fruit, he gave thanks to God. He took the third fruit, he gave thanks to God. While he was on the fourth fruit now, this time around, he was already getting satisfied very well. He just said, the thank you started reducing. When he got to the fifth one, the thank you started reducing. When he got to the seventh one, he said, Oh God, is this only this apple that I'm going to take? <laughs> Complain has set in. He was already set. You know, the person who was telling us the story, he said, he called it the law of diminishing gratitude. Has already set in. And from there, you know, I didn't follow the story to the end. But you can tell, once, gratitude, once ingratitude begins to set in, your trust, your belief... Your belief in God is weakened. Your strength in God becomes weakened. So I'll round up by just making this statement. I just said, I read it somewhere and I like it. It said, um, Thanksgiving is a tool that makes our faith stronger. While ingratitude is the material the devil used that makes our faith weaker, thus making us vulnerable to enemies' fire lines. Amen. So, let's, as we go towards the end of the month, yes, and as we progress to 
into the second quarter of the year, you may, there may be some things that you have not been able to achieve. But thank God you are alive. Thank God that God is keeping you. Thank God that you are overcoming daily. It will matter the obstacles that is coming your way. I want someone to be on his feet as we bring the brief thanks unto the Lord. Father, we bless your holy name. We thank you, Lord. We thank you because, Lord, we have not been overcome by the plague in the world. We bless your holy name. We worship you because, Lord, we will not be weakened in our faith, but we will continuously, steadfastly give you thanks. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers. For in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. What a word. Ingratitude. It's very easy to point finger outside. But we need to look at ourselves. Joel chapter 1 from verse 9. I have, we have, we always go to verse 12. So let's look at Joel chapter 1 verse 9. The meat offering and the drink offering is cut off from the house of the Lord. The priests, the Lord's ministers, the mourn. The field is wasted. The land mourns for the corn is wasted. The new wine is dried up. The oil languishes. Be ye ashamed, O oh, your husband man, that is farmer. Howl, O oh, ye vine dressers, for the wheat and for the barley, because the harvest of the field is what? Is perished. Everybody, verse 12. Let us read verse 12 together. One to go. The vine is dried up, and the fig tree languishes. The pomegranate tree, the palm tree, also and the apple tree even all the trees of the field are withered because what joy is withered away from the sons of men what dried it in gratitude joy is an attitude first apple ah god thank you for the miracle third apple thank you Fourth apple, uh, thanks. Seventh apple, is this all? We become familiar with God and familiar with his acts. That even what he's doing for us doesn't make any sense anymore. The same thing happens in close relationship. You get used to the 2000 that after some time the 2000 is not important anymore. And yet, there are certain things that I cannot tell you because of. Somebody started calling me early this morning. He needs money. For what? Drug. So I said, how much is that drug money? 1005 1,500 for drug. And I'm sure he's been thinking of it all night. My drug is finished. And you who is healthy, who buys bread with your own money, you are angry with God. And somebody is looking for 1,005. I won't tell you of those who come to my house. Unbelievable people who phone me. It's only known to me and my wife. Can you lift up your hand and give thanks to God that you are not only alive, you are healthy, you are able to come to church, you are hearing words that will sustain you. We are thanking Him for yesterday, we are thanking Him for today, 
and you, are, you thank him for what he is doing right now and then we thank him for what he's about to do great are you lord and greatly to be praised for your mighty acts for your mighty acts for your mighty acts for your mighty acts in jesus name all of you look up if you have somebody to talk to to even give you you should be grateful to god there are some people they they want to talk somebody but they have nobody to talk to nobody to talk to yesterday one very honorable said i ran away from home because there's no food at home and uh, I'm, I'm not i'm not giving you the description so it's an honorable person and because it's an honorable person i can't give him five thousand <laughs> I have to give him 10,000. So I say, I'm very sorry that it's this one. I say, no, 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 no. I'm sorry to disturb you. I say, what are people for? It didn't start today. Very unimaginable person. Honorable. If you can buy your own bread, be thankful. If you can do what? buy your own bread even if it's bread and let's be out of this which clock am I? okay can you wave your hand father i thank you for my health i thank you for my strength i thank you if you are swallowing drug that the drug is working i thank you because drug is not working for everybody that your food is digesting thank him that you were able to manage the last money to come here this evening. Thank him. There is somebody in the hall now that you can ask to give you, find you 200 before you go home. That you have that person. Thank him. Give thanks unto the Lord. I am grateful unto you. I thank you, Father. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you for your word that has come to me. Can you use your mouth to tell God, I will not take you for granted. I will not take you for granted. I will not take you for granted. Blessed be your name, O God. Thank you, most high. Thank you, most holy. Thank you, most righteous. Thank you, immortal. Thank you, invisible. Thank you, only wise God. In Jesus' name we pray. Please learn the habit of rejoicing. When you are rejoicing, it's not because you have plenty of money in your account. Reverend Wola, I should not be telling people how much is in my account nowadays, so I will not tell you. <laughs> but you can't come to my office without music playing. And you think it's music. No, it's worship. One will play and then I'll repeat it again because I want to hear it and follow it and thank him. And you know what? Several times in my sleep, I'll be singing the songs. Sometimes I wake up with those songs. What you meditate upon is what you go to bed with. That is what you'll be saying in your dream. And that is what you wake up with. And so it goes with me along the road, everywhere. I go to music shops to buy current CDs myself. The latest one was uh, two weeks ago. Four. I want to hear how people are praising God so I can upgrade and update my own praising God. Glory be to God. Because that is where my fattening comes from. And Habakkuk upgraded his own in Habakkuk 317. Habakkuk upgraded his own in Habakkuk 3 verse 17. Where is Habakkuk 3 verse 17? Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines, the labor of the olive shall fail, and the field shall yield no meat, the flock shall be cut off from the field, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. 18. 18. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord, I will joy in the God of my salvation. And what will happen? Verse 19. 
the Lord God will become my strength. He will make my feet like hinds feet. And he will make me to walk upon my high places. So when you praise him, you rejoice him, you are thankful, he'll make you to walk upon the high places. Let me ask you a question. Imagine, since you left village and went to school, did you go back to your village to struggle with your brothers over your father's farmland? And every one of you hearing me, you will never, your children will never your children's children's children they will never go to the village to look for food none of your children will go to the village to struggle for farmland but are we not eating are we not eating whether the devil like it or not you will eat you will eat you will eat glory be to God let me welcome your neighbor to the church but observe social distancing say neighbor welcome to the <laughs> I am believing God that even if Kogi is the last man standing there shall be no coronavirus here because we are now three states standing <laughs> we will see the end of this thing and we will lose nobody nobody will cough nobody will sneeze nobody will go down let not your heart be troubled and please keep your mouth keep your mouth and be careful with all those things they are posting on the all the samples that they took from FMC to CDC uh, it came out negative they haven't come here to take samples be careful with all those things they are posting there God will help us and Kogi said it is in touch with CDC every day God will help us in Jesus name alright please take your seat quickly Acts chapter 16 Acts chapter 16 is a long reading but the service will not be long Acts 16 reading from verse 16 we we'll read it to verse 31 and it came to pass as we went to prayer you know they had this custom of prayer it came to pass as we went to prayer a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination she met us and she brought her masters much gain by suit saying the same lady followed Paul and us and cried saying these men are the servants of the most high God which show unto us the way of salvation and this she did many days but Paul being grieved turned and said to the spirit in that girl I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her and he came out of her that same hour and when her master saw that the hope of their gains was gone they were using her for gain they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers and then they brought them to the magistrate saying these men being Jews do exceedingly trouble our city and they teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive neither to observe because we are Romans and the multitude rose up together against them and the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them and when they had laid many stripes upon them they cast them into the prison charging the jailer to keep them safely who having received such a charge from the authority throws them into what the inner prison where they will not be able to escape and made their feet fast in the stocks but at midnight 
at midnight Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God in their chains and the prisoners heard them and suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundation of the prison was were shaken and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands were loosed and the keeper of the prison awaking out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open he drew out his sword and would have killed himself supposing that the prisoners had been fled but Paul cried with a loud voice to him saying do thyself no harm for we are all here and he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas. And he brought them out and said unto them, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Finally, verse 31, everybody read with me. And they say, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy household. How many of you believe on the name of Jesus? Let me see your hand. You believe on the name of Jesus, you are saved. Whether you were doubting your salvation before you came, I am now telling you and confirming. This is confirmation class that you are saved. Glory be to God. I say glory be to God. This evening's meeting is more or less going to be prayer meeting. But before we get to the prayer meeting, on Sunday, we started with the power and blessing of thanksgiving. The power and the blessing in thanksgiving. Now, the two passages we just read, beginning with um, Isaiah chapter 12, verse 3, that uh, Dick and Chubi started from, with joy shall you draw water out of the well of salvation. Can I say something to somebody here? A point comes in your life and your commitment to God that God doesn't even need your permission to do anything to you. But at the end of it, it's for your good. It makes you a better person. When God sent Joseph to Egypt, to Potiphar's house, he didn't need his permission. But it was for his good. That is what Job meant when he said, when he has tried me, I shall comfort as what? As gold. I will not complain because I will comfort as gold. May you come out better in your times of trials. And the Bible says in the book of James chapter 1, reading from verse 2. Let's look at James chapter 1 from verse 2. He talks about rejoicing in trials. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have a perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Glory be to God. I say glory be to God. Let me tell you a little story about impatience. This little Chinese girl followed the grandmom to where they planted maize. And the grandma said, when this maize grows, we are going to be harvesting, we'll be eating. I said, grandma, grandma, is it going to grow fast? He said, yes. <laughs> they come the next day, it hasn't grown fast. They come the next day, it hasn't grown fast. They come the next day, it hasn't grows, grown fast. Grandma, when is he going to be told? He said, be patient. So one day they came to the farm and went back. And then he returned to the farm and started helping the maize to grow. <laughs> so he started pulling them up that they should grow faster. And that since he has pulled them up, when they come back tomorrow, they'll be taller. By the time they came the next day, <laughs> Grandma said, what happened to my maize? He said, Grandma, I came to help them to grow faster. He said, oh, life is a process, my son. When you hasten the process, you will damage the system. Glory be to God. 
count it all joy I want you to know that God is in control of your life and I know that all things work together for good all things work together for good all things work together for good and our present trial does not sound pleasant but at the end, the Bible said the glory it brings is weighty. So count it all joy. That is be joyful as we are counting them one by one. Be joyful. Put on the weapon of praise. I will bless the Lord at all time. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Especially things that you cannot, you feel you can't change. And when we say this thing, sometimes people think we don't know what we are talking about because we have no experience. The day my final year result came out, medical school, surgery in particular, they asked me to repeat surgery. My wife is here. Carried my motorcycle. One year repeat. Went to see her, told her the result. We came back by 4 o'clock and we're having weekend seminar with Reverend George Adegoye. The theme is the integrity of the word of God. And the person who is leading chorus the first day is your pastor. And people were waiting to see what will happen. 5 o'clock on the dot, microphone was in my hand. And I said the opening prayer and we began choruses. What was the chorus? God, you are so good. God, you are kind. Are you going to tell God that he's good and kind when you failed? That is no failure. He knows the way that I am going. He owns me. I don't own myself. And glory be to God. How many years now? 33 years down the line. Water has found a lot of levels. If I don't tell you, you won't know. And many of the people who seemingly left me behind, a lot of them are in the grief. I meet quite some of them when I travel to England or Europe or United Kingdom. Many of them have developed wire hair by force. I want to let you know that your tomorrow is colorful, is very bright. Be armed with the weapon of praise. Don't let the devil take the joy of the Lord from your mouth. Keep it on with it, for with it you shall draw water out of what? The wells of salvation. You draw water out of the well of salvation. Out of the well of salvation. With joy you shall draw water out of the well of salvation. So when will you get home, read that Joel chapter 1 verse 9 to 12 one more time. Everything is dry. Why? Joy is dry from the children of men. If you keep the joy of the Lord, you will retain the strength of the Lord. And that strength will give you what your hand cannot give you. Thank you, Jesus. Praise attracts his presence. Praise provokes intervention. It was at midnight that they were singing, not at midday. At midnight. What is the meaning of midnight? All your friends, no matter how much they sympathize with you, they've gone to sleep to come back tomorrow when it's convenient. That is why you must never join pity party or drop your faith for anybody. So praise attracts his presence. Praise provokes intervention. In Second Chronicles chapter 20, uh, Jehoshaphat said, we do not know what to do. But our eyes are upon you. Eventually, they put choir in front and began to sing. And on Sunday we looked at that Isaiah 38 verses 1 and 2 then 18 and 19. How are you going to be praising God 
when they told when God sent a messenger to you that you are already dead, he said, God, go to the cemetery and shall praise the Lord whether anybody will answer. He said, Those people can't praise you. Is the living as I do this day. So I'm going to be praising you on this day that there is a prophecy that I'm going to die. I will praise you. I will praise you. I will praise you for he said, but remember, it's only the living that praises you. And I'm not yet ready to go to the land of the dead. I should not be deprived of the residue of my years. Then he will sing again. Lord says, Isaiah, go back and tell him. He has 15 more years. Thank you, Jesus. So Psalm 34, verse 1 to 3. Let's keep it in mind continually. Keep it in mind continually. Psalm 34, verse 1 to 3. I'll praise the Lord. I'll praise the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Verse 3. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. 4. We are going to verse 5. Verse 4. I saw the Lord and he had me and delivered me from all my fears. Through what? The instrument of praise. And finally... They looked unto him and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. Their faces were not ashamed. First Thessalonians 5, verse 16 and 18. We we'll read verse 16 to 18. That was where we ended on Sunday. That prayer must be sandwiched in between praises. Verse 16, rejoice evermore. Then 17, pray without ceasing. Verse 18, in everything give thanks. So prayer is sandwiched. You sing double the prayer. You soak and water and soak and water your prayer with praises and rejoicing. Even if there is nothing to rejoice about. The Bible says Jesus carried five loaves of bread and two fishes to feed 5,000. He said, Lord, grumble. I said, is this all you can get? Father, I thank you. Even for these five, I thank you for these five. I thank you for these five. I thank you for these five. A thankful heart brings perfection of healing and wholeness. Perfection and wholeness. Luke chapter 17 verse 15. Ten lepers were cleansed or healed. From verse 15, Luke 17. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. And fell down on his face at his feet, giving Jesus thanks. And he was a Samaritan. The Jews went away, but the stranger came back to thank him. Verse 17. And Jesus answered said, Were there not ten of you cleansed? But where are the remaining nine? Where are the remaining nine? Verse 18. There are not found that return to give glory to God except this stranger. There are some people, no matter what God does for them, they will never testify. Nah. Nah. People will think, nah. I don't want these people to think of something about me now. Pastor, I can just give you the testimony now, but please don't mention it on stage. I'm not coming to this. I'm not coming forward. Mm. Mm. What you go to show doctors and nurses, which God has healed, you refuse to give glory to Him in His house. I know some people go to the ridiculous thing and say. All this pastor, they don't get shame. Anything we God do for them, nine then they talk. Can you imagine Bishop? They talk, say, God give him five thousand. What is five thousand to that man? <laughs> well done. Well done. Can I tell you something? A miracle is a miracle. There's no small miracle, there's no big miracle. This man returned to give thanks. And as a result of that, verse 19. And Jesus said unto him, Arise, go thy way. 
Your faith has made you whole. There's a difference between be healed and be made whole. All his fingers grew back. Thanksgiving brings perfection of your healing. Thanksgiving establishes wholeness. Thanksgiving makes things that were waiting to be perfected to be perfected. I talked about three levels of praise yesterday. On Sunday. So now let me talk about it. There is a praise before you see the miracle. And that is where a lot of Christians miss out. Should be quoted it. Romans 4.20 Abraham was strong in faith. Glorifying God for what he has not yet seen. Where is Romans 4.20? And he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God for what he has not yet seen. There is praise before you see the miracle. That praise hastens your miracle. That praise provokes intervention. Jehoshaphat praised before he saw. Ahijah praised before he saw. Am, am I making a point to somebody? Hezekiah praised before he was healing. And so after this service, if there is any challenge, you begin to thank God that he is God. No complaining, no murmuring, no grumbling. And then there is praise for what he has done. That is what the leper came to do and there is praise for what he's about to do you already seen the sign but it's not yet there when Jesus lifted the bread that is a sign that food is around but it's not enough that praise multiplies what you have there is a praise before there is a praise for the present there is a praise after actually the praise of faith is the one you begin to thank him before you see you are thanking him before you see you are thanking him for he is doing something you are thanking him that he is at work you are thanking him that he has had you are thanking him because he is doing something you are thanking him before you see three levels of praise With 50 naira in your pocket and you don't know where to go, you are thanking him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And you are standing in one place and people think you are meditating. They don't know that you are waiting for a miracle. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Find out from the finance committee any time that our money is very rich and they bring the paper. Once I read it, I tell everybody let's put our hand father we thank you for this plenty am I correct including last Sunday because what we had was not up to our need father we thank you father when you have that attitude you will never be stranded don't develop any attitude of blaming anybody oh if my brother was a human being if he's not a human being is he an animal <laughs> If my sister is not a beast, if, <laughs> if he's a beast, he will be in the bush. I wouldn't be where I am. No. Can I tell you something? His glory he shares with no man. So whether they help you or not, you will get what he wants you to get if you maintain a right attitude. Am I making a point to somebody? So be thankful at all times. Even when it seems as if you are stranded, be thankful. Abraham gave thanks before. Jesus gave thanks for the five loaves that was in his hand. And then the leper gave thanks after. Even though it, the Bible says he fell down, glorifying God and giving thanks with a loud voice. <laughs> 
In my church, no me my In my church, no me my Then the someone say, hey, you don't go. You know the shame. You don't go. You don't go. <laughs> Let's hear what the testimony you have today. Such people lose. <laughs> Such people lose their miracle. If you thank him for the little, he will add. Thanksgiving multiplies what you have. A thankful heart. A thankful heart. A thankful heart. Prepares an atmosphere for mighty intervention. A praiseful heart. So praise before you see the miracle Abraham, Jesus, Hezekiah. Praise for what he's doing. Praise for what he has done. Praise is an expression of approval. Offering of words of your mouth as homage and an act of worship. Thanksgiving is acknowledgement of your appreciation by using your own mouth. By using what? Your own mouth. By using your mouth. Somebody went to a house where they called him to take a car. So he picked Toyota Corolla and went to the man and prostrated. The man was giving out cars. I thank you. I never dreamt in life I would ever drive a car. So he said, which one did they give you? He said, Toyota Corolla. He said, they should take the key back. They gave him a Jeep. For thanks. You know their level of riches. Yes, by the way, he talked about one messenger. I don't know how many of you listen. When he prophesied, I say, as we are entering New Year, you will become a landlord. Yeah. And we will say, Amen. He said, if you believe, he come forward. He said, Oh, that messenger was among those. It's all right. All of you who believe. He went to greet his Oga Happy New Year. Oga said, Where are you staying? He said, So and so. He said, So far? Why? He said, that is where I'm renting house. I said, renting house. Um, okay, let me give you a New Year gift. They should bring keys. He said, this is where you are working. There's this house near the place. I'll take key. It's your house. With furniture. Fully furnished. Fully furnished. For New Year greeting. Many people are too proud to go for New Year greeting. Happy New Year, sir. That is what I've come. Even if it's water I gave you to drink, be thankful for it. So these things, they provoke miracle. And of course, it's an attitude. An attitude. From Sunday, I'm going to be talking on the power of relationship. Because Sunday is our family month. Isn't it? Isn't it? Now, I'll be talking about the power of relationship. Let me give you an example. I think it was last Sunday or last Wednesday I talked about my coming to Makodi and then going to my uncle. Then we went to the executive secretary of hospital management board. Supposing I carry my certificate and went to Dr. Bly. Uh, good afternoon, Doc. Um, I'm Dr. Ibn. I'm coming from Sarah. I'm a man of God. <laughs> and I want you to employ me. <laughs> Don't say the Lord. He will, <laughs> he will call his secretary. What did this young man tell? <laughs> what did this young man tell you before he came here? But when I went with him, he knew him, so it added weight. Uh, now that uh, chief of staff of the president died, he became clearer to me why Onyema didn't lose his job. How many of you know what I'm talking about? It became clearer why he didn't do what? Lose his job. While others were shaking their heart whether their job would be. Onyama didn't have to worry. Because him and chief of staff started in Gatwick, 1977. 
and they have been together. When he was marrying in church, chief of staff was his best man. How will he lose his job? Is anybody getting what I'm talking? They came together, so they are going together. Relationship is powerful. I'm talking about it. And the problem is that once we talk about relationship, the first thing people are thinking about is man and woman. Look, look, you are narrow minded. So his job is what? Sick. Just forget it. This one is my friend. Just forget it. So the job is secure. Relationship. So we exploit, exploiting it for progress. Exploiting the power of relationship for advancement in life. It's what we are going to be considering from Sunday. All of the month of May. Glory be to God. Now, let's round up with our passage. Paul and Silas at the hour of prayer, every time they are going to pray, there is this lady who will follow them with very false prophecy and distracting them and distracting and disturbing what they were doing. And one day Paul got tired and he turned back and said, you foul spirit of the devil, come out of her. In the name of Jesus, the lady was delivered. They should thank him, isn't it? Instead of thanking him, they turned it around. Because the Bible says when they saw that <laughs> the source of their money has gone. Even in this life, we know a lot of people that are genuine who used to carry them in the village. A lot of people that are genuine used to carry them in the village. Who have prayer houses in town? A lot of them are genuine. How many of you know a genuine spirit? Some of you, young people, you don't know a genuine. But those of you who are senior, let me see your hand. A genuine spirit. <laughs> he carried them. They, they begin to see things. Familiar spirit in the village. They have to take them to the stream and kill something for their face to calm down. They can get up and start going to the bush. Even if their eye is closed, they will not miss the road. Yeah. With a close eye, they know the road to the stream. They know the road. Demonic something. Many of them say they have repented, they have opened churches. One of my second cousins came to our house that she now has the gift of prayer and then she in phase, in phase two and we move around the house and come as I say, look, 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 go back to school <laughs> go back <laughs> yeah,
How will a magistrate tear his dress? Is it your girl? You are only sitting in your court when they brought case to you. Then you decide to tear your dress. That is the height of injustice. And they didn't listen to them. They commanded them to be flogged. And then they flogged them. After that, they threw them into the inner jail and told the person in charge of the cell. He was locked the place where we were. Now, these people, they are criminals. If not, they can disappear. And the man kept the key in his pocket thinking that he has secured them. I have good news for you. Nobody can pocket you. No wish can pocket you. I didn't hear you. Went. No wizard can pocket you. Nobody can pocket your destiny. No power can pocket your destiny. No gate of hell can pocket your destiny. Your destiny is in the hand of God. They had put them in the inner. And they had concluded nothing will bring them out. And the man went to sleep. You know, he went to sleep because he was very sure that nothing will bring them out. I have good news for you. All those who think you will never rise in life, they are wasting their time. Before they wake up from their sleep, you will be on your throne. So while the man was sleeping, Paul and Silas were having pains in their leg. But they didn't allow the pain to stop their praise. Don't allow the pain to stop your praise. Don't allow the pain to stop your joy of the Lord. Don't allow the pain to take away your worship life. Don't allow the pain. Don't allow the pain to stop your gratitude. Don't allow the pain. Even the prison, be thankful that you are counted worthy to be there. Don't allow the pain. Don't allow the insults. Don't allow the abuse. Don't allow the conspiracy. Don't allow the cheating to stop your praise. If you don't know what to say, just keep saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. When we were in the university, we had this tall brother. And gradually, Islamic fanatism was growing. So he went to distribute, he gave track to one Muslim boy. So the boy slapped him. He said, praise the Lord. The boy slapped him a second time. He said, praise the Lord. The boy slapped him a third time. He said, praise the Lord. So right, it's enough now. He said, why did he give him tract? When the young man left, then he said, why were you doing like that? He said, well, I, each time the boy said, praise the Lord, I weak. Each time I slap him, I say, praise the Lord. I, I just the weak. I just the useful face, they slap him. But every time he say, praise the Lord, I just the weak. Some of the things that you think probably you are the one feeling more pain. The people who are abusing you, they are feeling greater pain. They will not be able to sleep in the night. Jesus said, don't practice an eye for an eye. He said, leave vengeance to me. Vengeance belongs to me, say it, the Lord. You know what happened? Within three months, the Muslim boy saw vision. He became a Christian. He started following this same boy out for evangelism. He said, every time you slap me, I slapped you and you say, praise the Lord. It was like I was going to die. He said, there's something about Christianity. It's different from what I was following. Glory be to God. So instead of saying, get me a lawyer, I'm going to sue the government. They were praising God. And as they praised God, the Bible said there was an earthquake. And that earthquake was a very special earthquake. It targeted the chains in the hand and the chains in the leg. And it did not only free them, it freed every prisoner. Let me tell you, your life will bring freedom to people around you. Your life will bring freedom to people around you. If you manage it well, if you follow the Lord well, your life is designed to bring liberty. 
to people around you. If you maintain a joyful attitude, you are affecting and infecting people around you. And the same miracle you are getting, they'll be getting the same miracle. So I want you to put on the joy of the Lord as we leave this service. Everybody rise for seven prayer points. Are you ready to pray? Seven prayer points. No prayer point will be more than one minute. Lift up your right hand. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I bind, I scatter, I paralyze the activity of every familiar spirit following my life, my family, my children, or my business. Open your mouth and pray in Jesus' name. I want your voice louder than this. Father, I bind the activity of every familiar spirit following my life, following my family, following my children, following my business, following my career, following my finances. I bind the activity of every familiar spirit. I paralyze all of you. I cast you back to hell in the name of Jesus. I bind the activity of every familiar spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. I rebuke you. I paralyze you. In Jesus name we pray. Number two, everybody say after me. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, every spirit making gains on my life. I bind all of them. Every spirit making me to spend money unnecessarily. I bind their activities. Open your mouth and pray in Jesus name. Father, I bind the activity of every spirit making gains on my life, making merchandise of my soul. I bind their power. I bind their operations. I bind their activities. Every spirit making their merchandise upon my life, upon my destiny, upon my family. Every unclean spirit making a merchandise of me. I bind them. I paralyze them. I overthrow them. I cast them away. Arise, O oh God. Let every enemy be scared scattered in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth in the name of Jesus Christ prayer number three this fellow seems to be advertising them but it was negatively I was walking against them he was following them from within but was not for them all right, lift up your hand and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I bind every spirit of false advertisement and enemies within. I bind the activities in Jesus' name. Open your mouth and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I bind every spirit of false advertisement. I bind every power behind false advertisement. I bind the spirit of accuser of the brethren. I bind the spirit of accuser of the brethren. I bind every unclean spirit. I bind every spirit of false advertisement. I bind every enemy within. I paralyze them. I scatter them by fire. Arise, O oh God. Let every enemy within, enemy without, let them be scattered. In Jesus' name we pray. Have I lift up your right hand? You are going to pray, Father, my good works should not, shall not bring me trouble. Did they do a good work? Yes. What, what reward did they bring? Trouble. I don't know. But it may not be for all of us, but if there is one person that is here with that prayer point, I'm to lift up your eyes. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, my good works shall not bring me trouble. I rebuke the devil in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, my good works shall not bring me trouble. My good works shall not bring me trouble. My good works shall not bring me trouble. The experience of Joseph in Potiphar's house shall not be my portion. My good works shall not bring me trouble in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. My good works shall not bring me trouble in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Arise, O God, let every enemy be scattered in the name of Jesus Christ. Christ, my good works shall not bring me trouble. 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 Arise, O God, let every enemy be scattered in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name. 
The Bible said they dragged them to the marketplace and they flogged them in the presence of everybody. How about they lift up your eyes? Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I bind every spirit of public disgrace. I shall not see grace, I shall be engraced. Open your mouth and pray. Father, I bind every spirit of public disgrace in the name of Jesus. I bind every plan public disgrace in the name of Jesus. I bind every plan of the enemy to bring shame, to bring disgrace. My portion is from grace to greater grace. My portion is from grace to grace. I bind the devil. I bind the devil. I bind every spirit of public disgrace. 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 In the name of Jesus, I shall be engraced. I shall be engraced. In Jesus' name we pray. Lift up your eyes. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, arise, O oh God. Scatter every conspiracy against my life, against my family, against my business, against my finance, against my career. Scatter every form of conspiracy. Open your mouth and pray in Jesus' name. Arise, O oh God, scatter every form of conspiracy against me, against my life, against my career. Scatter every form of conspiracy. Scatter every form of conspiracy against me, against my life, against my soul, against my family, against my children, against my career, against my spirit preaching. Scatter every form of conspiracy in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. When they put them in prison, it was an imposed limitation. It was what? Imposed limitation. How about they lift up your right hand? Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, break every form of limitation, every form of stagnation imposed upon my life. I command a broken in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, every form of limitation, I command them to be broken. I command them to be broken. Every form of limitation, every form of limitation, I command them broken. I command them broken. Every form of limitation, every form of limitation, every form of limitation, I command them to be destroyed. I command them broken. In the name of Jesus Christ, every form of limitation i command them broken today in the name of jesus christ thank you heavenly father in jesus name 2005 i preached a 22 minute sermon in israel we are pilgrims here on earth people repented the wives of our house of assembly members here they came to my room. Have her husband seen you? For what? After your sermon, they couldn't eat. I said, are there no pilgrims here? We were in Tel Aviv market. Myself, uh, Abuka, and John Udo. We were passing. One was, if you come and see you, as you they look, I know buy plenty. You. Come and see. I know buy plenty. You. I said, so what's the meaning of that? That's how my way they preach that time. Look, oh, I know by plant. <laughs> ah. Did they someone so touch you? We came for convocation, different states. We came to the ambassador's house. So I came to greet uh, Dr. Ajapo. That time he was chairman of Christian Pilgrim. So I wanted to introduce him. He said, you don't need to introduce yourself. I know you from afar, from Lokoja. But the 22 minute sermon you preached. I have watched it twice. And if that is all I came to Israel for, and if that is what we had to do this year, I am grateful to God. You don't need introduction. I have watched your sermon twice. I thank God for your life. But some people came here to look for my trouble, including hiring people to fight me. Lift up your two hands. Every good seed you sow, I command they attract good harvest. Yeah. Anybody who plant 
to reward you evil for good I command it today back to sender back to sender back to sender back to sender I scatter every conspiracy against your life including people you have helped who want to turn against you because they have done something on them. glory be to God Good news is your portion. Good news is my portion. This is our season of glad tidings of great joy. But this night, the Lord will send an earthquake against everything that is holding your destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ, this night, the God that has spoken to you today, send earthquake from heaven against everything holding your destiny in the name of Jesus your star is released your destiny is released your fortune is released your portion is released your health is released your finance is released you are blessed in Jesus name you are going to lift up your two hands father baptize me with the spirit of joy praise and worship Baptize me with the spirit of joy, garment of joy, spirit of joy, garment of joy, garment of praise, garment of praise, garment of praise. I will praise the Lord at all time. Nobody will beg me to praise God. I will praise you at all time. I will praise you at all time. And as I praise you, you will raise me. Everybody open your mouth and begin to thank the Father, thank the Son, thank the Holy Spirit for His mercy, for seeing today, for seeing this week, for seeing life, for being alive. Give thanks to the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord. Be thankful unto Him that we are alive, that He is our Father. Thank him for the word that you hear, for the direction you have received this evening. Thank you. That God. there is a raising, We're there blessed. is a blessing coming to you. We are great. Be grateful unto the Lord in the name of Lord. Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. It is time to offer unto the Lord. And uh, we've heard this evening our weapon, thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is a, an integral part of our worship and this evening we are made to understand that thanksgiving creates opportunity creates environment for divine intervention and offering is very very central to our thanksgiving even the words of our thanksgiving should go to god as an offering of adoration and worship and i want us to know that offerings do speak he spoke for Solomon. He offered unto the Lord, and that day, that night, an atmosphere of divine visitation was created, and he had a visitation with open check, offerings unto the Lord. I want you to think within your heart, set your heart this evening, and you know, look at what is in your hand. Can it command divine acceptance and approval? Will it command divine visitation? God bore witness to Solomon that it was in his heart to honor God. He did that not because he was a king and he had so many things to offer to God. It was in his heart to do so. And no wonder, as daddy has said, it's a thanksgiving brings perfection. It brings perfection of God, of what God intends to do in your life. And so it was for Solomon. In the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse, uh, verse 1, the Bible says, And he was strengthened in his kingdom. And the Lord his God, the Lord his God, magnified him greatly. That, that offering, I don't know what is in your hand this evening. It might be a seed for your magnification. It might be the seed that will bring divine visitation, divine open door to your life. I want you to set your heart and observe what is in your hand this evening. Does it worth it before God? The offering is 
unto the honor of God. So this evening, let's rise up. If you are here with your offering, if you are here with your tithes, please come forward as we offer unto God. Your tithes, if you have your tithes here this evening, let's come before the Lord as we drop it before him. The faithful God who promised to open doors to as many as obey him in this regard. Father, we are grateful. Your word is true. And we are grateful because we have this privilege to be in your presence this evening. Out of your blessings, we brought this token in honor of your name. May this, O oh God, be a seed that will catapult us into the realm of favor, the realm of blessings, the realm of divine visitation, even this evening in the name of Jesus. Thank you because you are faithful. In Jesus' name we pray. So let's rise up with our offerings. Our offerings. Let's rise with our offerings. Father, thank you because it is an opportunity. We know this evening you will bless us. Solomon did not leave Gibeon before you blessed him. Even before he got back to Jerusalem, you gave him a visitation. Tonight, some of us before we leave here, may we see your finger revealed in our lives and in our situation in the name of Jesus. Tonight, before tomorrow breaks, oh God, may you visit us beyond our expectations in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hey, my God is good, oh. Hey, my God is good, oh. 